A third method of biasing a transistor involves placing a constant current source in the source branch of the uh, transistor circuit, as shown here. It requires two power supplies, a positive and a negative power source. The, ground re or the uh, gate resistor here, as in the previous example, simply provides a DC reference. So at DC, the voltage here then is equal to zero. As in the other biasing schemes that we've seen, R sub D is used to move the drain voltage down off of the source voltage to give ample room for oscillations at the output. The current source circuitry is particularly interesting. So we're now going to look at how do we form this constant current source. That's done using what is known as a uh, current mirror. You'll notice that on Q1 here, the drain and the gate are tied together. That, of course, brings it into saturation because VDS is the same as VGS and uh, gives you an overdrive voltage uh, equivalent to the, the threshold voltage of the transistor. So Q1 is in saturation, and its current then, of course, is defined by this equation. But then we also have the um, resistor R here in the drain. So the current flowing through this resistance, we're going to call it the reference current, IRF, that is also equal to ID1, the drain current, since there's no current going through this uh, short to ground. So I reference then can also be found by taking VDD minus V source, so it's the full um, the full separation of voltage across the entire circuit, minus VGS. You'll see that the voltage here is VGS, so the resistance across this resistor is, or the voltage across this resistor is VDD minus a minus VSS, so plus VSS minus VGS divided by R. These two equations then establish the current I reference Again, since no current goes into the gate, I reference is just equal to I, um, ID1. With both of the gates tied together and the sources tied together here, VGS on Q2 is the same as VGS on Q1. So the current ID2 is equal to then 1 half K sub N prime W over L, this is the uh, aspect ratio of the second transistor. So they won't necessarily have the same aspect ratios, or at least they don't have to. But VGS is the same for both transistors. Because of that, we can, form the re we can determine the relationship between D2 and this reference current by taking the ratio of this equation to this equation, which is what we have here. So ID2 the current here, which I should point out, it's this current that then comes in here at the source of, of the uh, transistor here. This current source is right here, that current. So by making that um, ratio, because the gate to source voltages are the same, these cancel. The one halves, of course, cancel. The case of M primes cancel. And we're left with ID2 over I reference is equal to the ratio of the aspect ratios. Or the current in the source, then, is established as this reference current times the ratio of the aspect ratios. This, then, gives us a constant current source over realistic or reasonable range of currents. It's set by this resistor and this um, this transistor. You'll notice that there's nothing in this that's going to cause this current to drift or vary. There's no load on this. It's simply whatever the resistance or whatever the current is flowing through this resistor and this saturated transistor. Any load that comes on this current mirror on this current source is coming through this transistor and this current is held constant by the gate to source voltage. And again, that gate to source voltage is established by this over here. So it's kind of a clever, it's a real clever circuit and one of the few times that we've actually seen a constant current source in the real world.
this current mirror constant current source is used extensively in integrated circuits for biasing transistors. This is a, a very effective way of establishing a constant and stable bias condition.